sekian. Amy, you might be on mute. Because we no, can't. No, I'm not. I'm no. not. Now you can hear you. Oh, can you? Yeah, now mm -hmm. we can hear Got you. Me. Okay, can you hear? Mm -hmm. Can you hear it? Yeah. I was playing yeah. very quietly. I'll play louder. Thank you, dear. It was cutting out. Let me know. Is everybody able to hear me right now? Thumbs up. Okay. Is my sound cutting out? Yeah, yeah. The technology was bouncing in and out, so we we couldn't hear you. But 
the wonderful thing about this golden community is that they know they're getting the vibes anyways. So that's the wonderful thing. That's the wonderful thing. I wonder why. I don't know. I know that Melissa was having a little problems as well. So with the sound. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. No, sorry, here. No, sorry, here. Well, thank you everybody for coming. Welcome, welcome to our first full Zoom. I know that church, I know that lots of people have sometimes a little bit of uh problems with zoom church because they like that touch and feel and hug and so what we're going to try to do is make sure that you feel that energy today through um zoom right now um and so i would just ask you to open up your heart chakra your beautiful hearts and just open that up open that up open that up open that up and just for a moment, I would welcome you to take the monkey brain just for a moment, the monkey out of your brain. And just say, you can come back after an hour, but just for this moment of time, just take the monkey out of your brain for right now. And just that you're gonna feel vibration. You're gonna feel love. You're gonna feel hopefulness. And you're gonna feel gratitude. And just intentionally open up your heart for that. So this is our morning prayer. Take a moment and feel the energy that we are all going to be experiencing. This is a moment, the frequency of thanksgiving. This is one of your golden communities. Believe it or not, the Earth Star energy has brought you all to this divine spot. The creator, the cosmic intelligence, your divine intuition has brought you all to this divine spot. Right now here to receive. Sharing caring, joy, laughter, fun, and most of all, appreciation and thanksgiving. These can be our total and complete personal expressions that we bring to the planet at this time, which is so needed. Let this service help you to experience unimaginable harmony, happiness and contentment. That's all a frequency and that's an expression of our divine personality. Relax and allow all the love and light that is here for you today during this Zoom spiritual service enter into every part of your body. Be still. Be present and receive. And so it is. Amen. Miss Melissa is going to do the reading. Good morning, beautiful souls. Can you hear me? Awesome. I was having a little trouble with sound earlier. So I'm glad you can hear me now. So I have um, a reading here by Judith Kusel. Everything is changing form now so rapidly that the more you resist, the more all will surface, which you need now to let go of. This includes all fear and fear programming and all which ever caused pain and suffering. All duality, separation, all conscious and subconscious false belief systems, doctrines, judgments, etc. All is now changing into higher dimensional frequency bands very rapidly. And this is the disillusion of all which has come before. As soon as something dissolves, it is immediately replaced by a much higher wholesome form. 
All is love in the highest degrees. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Well, I just want you to let those words, even if you don't remember them right now, just let those words just sink into you. Whatever needs to dissolve, don't try to hold on to it. Let it dissolve because the next best things are going to be happening to you. The next wonderful things are going to be happening to you. And I'm glad that you all came on Zoom today because I have a wonderful treat for myself as well as a wonderful treat for all of you. And uh, Renita, Dr. Renita Robinson is going to be speaking today. And so I personally, as I introduce her to the group, I personally want to thank her for her friendship, for our connection, for our laughter, for our comfort, for her strength, for her encouragement, for her unity, for her forgiveness for her grace and for the celebration of joy. She has personally brought so many strands of new tapestry into my life that are real and awesome and necessary. She is the person that I go to when I feel a bit uh, weakened. And she is the person that I go to that brings courage to me and grace to me and so every time i get to talk with her and experience her energy field it is um it absolutely comes into my life it absolutely comes into my life so it is an honor to introduce my dear 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 friend renita dr renita robinson sweet renita you are on Excellent. Yeah, thank you for that. Thank you for that. That is beautiful. I think I should show up for that kind of energy um, just because of the tenderness that it um, dumps into my spirit because of uh, just memories uh, that uh, it helps me with. And then um, I just, I love you. I love you. And it's so good to consistently be challenged to kind of experience that love and have it open up and so thank you so much um yeah I, wow thank you hope thank you um we certainly could go back and forth and i could share just how reciprocal um those feelings are for you and in my preparation i was thinking about the first time we met um, and I was the executive director of the Committee Against Domestic Abuse, and we had an event in a park in Mankato, and um, and it was just, it was really quite different than I had ever experienced, um, and uh, you felt like you wanted to get to know me, but I certainly wanted to get to know you more, and even in the opening segment of this, I just recognize that the Hope Interface provides opportunity, the Hope Interface Center provides opportunities that you just don't get other places. And so thank you for that. And thank you for this community and what you all contribute to me every time I show up and, and by extension of my relationship with Janice experience, anytime I get to visit with her, it's really, thank you all so much. Um, I uh, am so happy uh, to be sharing today, and I think I've shared before uh, about Thanksgiving, but like when I was a young mother, um, stages in my children's development helped me remind myself of where I was at different times. And so uh, whenever I come back to the Hope Interfaith Center, I'm reminded of where I am now and where I've been at different times. And so I reflected back on um, my time in Mankato, living in Mankato and relationships that I developed here. I see some folks on the call. It's so good uh, to see you all. Um, but I also reflect on um, my emotional health, um, the highs and the lows and uh, just uh, the journey in between some of the places 
um, and then uh, the strength that I grew. And so it's always interesting when someone says to you that you are strong to them because there are times in your life where you certainly don't feel strong. And so to hear someone say that whether you felt like it or not, I experienced you as strong is really quite um, uh, comforting. And so thank you so much for that contribution. I, uh, Thanksgiving, oh my goodness, such a big topic, um, but such a good topic. Um, and we know that it comes around at least once a year and we're forced to think about it. And so I'm grateful um, to, uh, to be sh uh, sharing on Thanksgiving. And so thank you so, so, so much. Um, so we know uh, that by definition, Thanksgiving is really the expression of gratitude. It's an expression of gratitude. Sometimes it's deep gratitude. Sometimes it's perfunctory because mom taught us that we should always say thank you. Um, and we should appreciate people who have done uh, something to us. Or dad told us always say um, thank you or congratulations. But we were taught um, to express gratitude, um, especially if we come from a religious background or if that is a part of who we are. Um, and we are always saying there is a mark marvelous great creator that we owe our life to because we wouldn't be here without them correct um, and so especially to God we are expressing gratitude uh, to God and so gratitude is actually a quality and so gratitude is this quality of actually being thankful don't you love those definitions that go in circles I have another computer that I need to turn off here so that it doesn't do something Okay. Um, and so um, it's, it's a readiness, um, it's a gratitude, the quality of being thankful and a readiness, a readiness. I'm at the ready, I'm ready, ready to show appreciation for um, and to uh, individuals, to circumstances, to um, realities that we believe is just a, a readiness. And when I think of readiness, I think about running up to the starting line and getting ready for a race, a readiness. And so I have gone through all of the motions. I have um, prepared myself. I have done the things that were necessary to show up and give my all and to give my best performance and and to if it's to give a show to do a show to um entertain or to experience like i'm ready for it, just a readiness um um for that uh and then um i just started thinking in preparation for this and and um, the new role that I'm in, because I told you guys, it makes me reflect. And so I have been in just a number of roles and I'm currently in um, a role in healthcare. And so I'm the vice president of diversity and inclusion at a healthcare network, uh, Purveya Health in um, Green Bay, Wisconsin is the headquarters, but we have uh, locations across the state of Wisconsin and our charge or my area's charge is really to be bringing focus into social determinants of health, health equity, health disparities, all things that are barriers to people being able to um, be as healthy as possible. And recently we have partnered with an organization that has a focus on wellness. And so I've been in this conversation for the last year and a half about uh, really making sure to elevate the things that are in individuals' control as it relates to their ability to have health. And so I want to use that as a backdrop as I share just a little bit about Thanksgiving. And I can't share about... Um, Thanksgiving without talking about um, the people in my life that I'm thankful for. And of course, I said that I am grateful and thankful uh, for hope, but I uh, would not be alive if it were not for my children. Um, I have some history in my life where my decisions to be present and alive were directly con connected to my responsibility as their primary caregiver. And so I am thankful um, that during the lowest moments in my life that I was responsible to other human beings. And, and, and if it were not me taking full um, 
uh, uh, control of my responsibility to care for them, I may have made decisions that would have um, looked different. And so I'm thankful for my children. I am thankful for individuals in my life that call me friend, that say that you are worth the title and the honor of being called friend. There's a friend that sticks closer to a brother than a brother. There is a friend that when times get dark and when I am feeling at my worst and when I am presenting at my worst, that that friend will show up in my life and listen to me and hear me and sit close to me. And it will not include any judgment. It will be full of that rapt attention that without saying it says, I love you. You matter to me. If you were not here, my life would be changed and it would be darker and it would be sad and I would hurt and it would hurt my heart. And so I'm so grateful and thankful for the reality of having friends. And so thank you all um, for being my friend by extension. Um, and so thank you, thank you, thank you. And so I cannot think about thanksgiving and thankfulness and gratitude uh, without thinking of people whose responsibility was one thing, but who held that responsibility so dear that they did it with efficacy that then spilled into my life and my development and made me who I am. And, and, um, and so I'm thankful for coaches. I have coaches from since I was yay high. I started being an athlete when I was in elementary. And so I have a list of coaches who it was their responsibility to develop skill in me, to impart information about how to do some of the things that I chose to do better. Um, and they showed up. Um, sometimes they challenged me and they believed in me in things that I could do that I didn't believe. And I did those things because they believed it. And all of us, whether we believe it or not, or whether we know it or have even thought about it or not, we are coaches to someone. We are coaches to someone. And so I really want just to take a second and have you all pause and reflect on the reality that there is someone in your life today, tomorrow, this week, this month, that sees you as a coach and they are gleaning information from you. They are gleaning strategies on how to live well. They are gleaning strategies on how to be better. They are gleaning strategies for how to be happier, and to feel more full and, and to live longer. They are gleaning strategies from you because you're one of their coaches. I am thankful today for challenges. And sometimes we really shy away from, we move away from, and we really spend a lot of energy on attempting to make things just so. We want a life that is free from challenge. We want a life that is free from um, distress. We want a life that is full of wellness and there's nothing bad with this, but I am here to tell you that in the challenging moments of our life is where we grow the good stuff. So everything I believe about me that is noteworthy, everything about me that will cause a person to want to be my friend, I believe was birthed in some kind of challenge. I last weekend had the privilege of being um, uh, around a newborn baby. I went to visit family in uh, North Carolina and the baby was born you know, just within a few hours of me arriving. And I was reflecting in, uh, as I heard the conversations about the delivery of the, the ultimate challenge of being birthed and the strain of um, uh, being birthed and coming out of the womb and the intensity of attention to the details of new life, all of that is wrapped in challenge and that baby would not have a chance if the individuals that were a part of that had not done their best to meet the challenge. And so I encourage people um, to wear challenges uh, with, uh, with a smile, to wear challenge um, with an air of accomplishment, to wear challenge um, as a gift experiences 
I am thankful today for the myriad of the myriad experiences that I have that were teaching me things that I didn't know they were teaching me until some later time. And I have this conversation often. I took a, a nephew who came to school at University of uh, Wisconsin-Milwaukee, and he's a track athlete there, and it is my sister's daughter's son. And so I was in the area for an event, and I called him the day before, and I just called because I didn't know how he would respond. And I said, hey, Jay, I said, I'm going to be around tomorrow and wonder if you had some time for breakfast or lunch. And with a smile in his voice, he said, Tinique, I like that. Tinique, I like that. And I was floored because what is this 18 year old that's in the beginning of all things new and um, developing his own new um, peer group and just all this newness? What, what business or what what worth am I to, to him for a couple of hours of his day? And the fact that he responded with the positivity that he did was beautiful. And, and I felt honored by that. You are the auntie, the grandma, the friend, the sister, the brother, the uncle, the boss of someone that joyfully says, yes, I'd like that when you make time for them. They are thankful that you thought enough of them to take time out of your schedule to call them, to text them, to write them an email, to include them in your story. Acquaintances. Now the acquaintances are the ones that if I had my choice, I sometimes would not choose, right? I just wouldn't choose because I don't see something in them that contributes to me. And that is low-minded thinking because the humanity of every individual alive, still taking breath, has something to contribute to me. And the older I get, the wiser I get in terms of understanding that I don't get to choose the opportunity that is birthed out of that human connection. So I want to read um, a little piece for you. Come on. Come on. I think the computer died. I've been begging it all morning and it died. But it was a, um, a poem. It says that... Um, Oh, here it is. It says that people are in our lives for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. People always come into your life for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. When you figure it out which it is, you know exactly what to do. When someone is in your life for a reason, it's usually to meet a need you have expressed outwardly or inwardly. They have come to assist you through a difficulty, to provide you with guidance and support. To aid you physically. Technology is even a little character development. This person may say, to aid you physically, emotionally, and even spiritually, they may seem like a godsend to you, and they are. They are there for the reason you need them to be. Then, without any wrongdoing, on your part or at an inconvenient time, this person will say or do something to bring the relationship to an end. Sometimes they die. Sometimes they just walk away. Sometimes they act up and force you to take a stand. What we must realize is that our need has been met, our desire fulfilled, their work is done. The prayer you sent up has been answered and it's now time to move on. When people come into your life for a season, it's because your turn has come to share, grow, and learn. They may bring you an experience of peace to make you laugh. They may teach you something you may you have never done. 
they usually give you an unbelievable amount of joy. Believe it, it's real, but only for a season. And like spring turns to summer and summer turns to fall, the season eventually ends. Lifetime relationships teach you lifetime lessons. Those things you must build upon in order to have a solid emotional foundation. Your job is to accept the lesson, love the person anyway, and put what you have learned to use in all other relationships and areas in your life. It is said that love is blind, but friendship is clairvoyant. Thank you all for being a part of my life, whether you were a reason, a season, or a lifetime. And the author is unknown, but I included it today <clears throat> because I often ask the question, when you woke up this morning, did you wake up thinking that you would change a person's life? Did anybody wake up this morning thinking, I am going to change someone's life today? Well, you already have, because if you weren't here, my life would be different. The contribution that you made being on this call would actually be different. And so thank you for the contribution that you made to my life. And so as I prepared, I asked myself the question, what if we, all of us here, and by extension, the people we will talk with this about, what if we took on a posture of thanksgiving what if we were intentional in terms of finding anything virtuous about the challenge in our midst? I was in Milwaukee driving around trying to get to the lunch meeting with my nephew yesterday and I saw a lot of uh, things that made my heart ache. I saw a lot of poverty. I saw a lot of living conditions, conditions that I felt like, what can I do something about? And I thought to myself, they have a house that they maybe I'm looking at and, and seeing as dilapidated, but it is a house, it is a home, and it is covering them from the elements. And I am thankful for that. And then I saw a man who was sitting in the street and he had an exposed limb. I don't know how he lost the limb, but it was just the nub of it. And he was sitting in the street to make sure that people saw him. And I was like, oh my goodness. If I, it was just, it was, it was impactful to me. And I said, I am thankful that he had the energy to make the decision to get him to where he is for whatever he believes that he's going to get out of this interaction. The older I get, the more I live, the broader my extent in my experiences extend, the more I recognize how much I have to be thankful for. I don't know why I'm so teary today. I keep feeling that little flutter in my voice. I'm a little teary. Um, and the more I recognize all those things, the more I recognize that even today that I am deciding I am deciding to smile with you. I am deciding to be present with you. I am deciding to accept your presence as a joyful contribution to me and, and what I am doing to me. I am choosing, I am choosing to see the ring in the middle of, uh, of the, the rubble that sometimes happened. And that's from a book, The Ring in the Rubble. It was a book and it talked about rubble, but finding Rub, some rubble happened and there was a ring buried in it and people had to excavate and get to it to find the ring in the rubble. And so that expression was from a book. I realized that after I said it that you didn't have any idea what that meant. So um, I have um, decided, I have chosen, and now I am activating Thanksgiving. I'm activating Thanksgiving by saying yes to hope. And whenever hope says yes, I don't even ask a question. I just say yes. I say sometimes let me check my calendar. But even before that, I say yes, because that's the contribution that she has made to me. And um, that is my commitment and my activation of our relationship, of our friendship. Um, I was 
giggling before I was on the call because I love kind of eavesdropping into conversations. I love that it. it makes me so happy because people say things and they're excited to see each other and they're happy and they say little things that are big things. And and DC is somewhere in Texas and I don't know why that cracked me up. He was like somewhere in Texas. I was like, well, where in D? Where in Texas? I mean, do you not know where you're being coy with us? What in the world? It cracked me up and I just wanted to say that there are so many opportunities for us to be thankful because people drop little notes or or little sayings or they say words that are life-giving and if we choose and we decide to listen and hear that it fills us up and we're expansive and the before we know it, in us being filled up and us expanding what we're saying, someone else is getting joy from what we're saying. And before you know it, you have done this thing where there is this um, connectivity and this this kind of, I don't even know how to describe it, but it's exponential potential. I love it. And we get to decide to show up like that every day. Um, I am not fond of talking about myself so much, uh, but I am going to say a few things about people in my life who have held a mirror up to me and told me things that I didn't believe about myself. So hope, of course, is one of those, but my children are one of those for me, and my children now are 32 and 31. One just had a birthday, and um, if you are parents and have had relationships with older children, you know how um, it's like being dipped in fun, dude. just the warm um, expectation of the richness of that chocolate. If you're a chocolate lover, um, I mean, it's just, it's just beautiful. It's just beautiful. And if fondue isn't your thing, a warm blanket, a fuzzy soft blanket in the cool of a, um, the room, the temperature of a room, um, or perhaps uh, just being able to dig into a, a, a meal that you've been preparing uh, in your mind for some time and finally it's set before you and you get to dig in and you taste the excellence of the preparation. And so um, my son says things to me and he is on the other, life, other side of some challenge. And I have talked to you all about this son um, many years. As a matter of fact, my relationship I have with the Hope Interfaith Center extends many years. And so for many years, I've talked about that one of my sons as a son that is my character developing son. And we giggle about that, but it's true. Um, the challenge of worrying, um, and though I've given up worthy, worrying now, you know, um, the challenge of uh, whether he is going to live up to his full potential and why he was uh, brought to this earth, um, the reality of the children, the grandchildren that call me Abuela T and call me Granny Tyrants and Granny and um, all of those things are these marvelous contributions um, that he makes to me. And um, I uh, couple those contributions with the challenge of him figuring out his life. And so I'm grateful and I am giving thanks today in my Thanksgiving presentation to the reality that he has lived long enough to uh, recognize that he has to choose better and he is choosing better. And in our conversations, I can hear him growing healthier. And in our conversations, I recognize that he perhaps has crossed over some of the most challenging terrain of his life. And that gives me a feeling of comfort. And I want to encourage you that you have something to be thankful for in the children that have crossed over some of the roughest terrain in their life. And so I encourage you to be thankful for them and tell them how thankful you are for them and that they're on the other side of some of that very challenging terrain. I um, am in a stage of my life where I am uh, hopeful for some different relationships and, and I'm hopeful and, and in the hoping of those things, I haven't just stopped existing, but I have decided that when I am um, given an invitation to do something that for years I would have absolutely said no to, that I will say yes. And so I found myself two times this week in situations that even 
two years ago, I probably would have said no to for whatever reason. And I said yes to those things. And during those times, there was laughter and there was enjoyment and there was just fun. And there were all of the things that grow our hearts and that keep us wanting to be here. And I want to encourage you all to give thanks to the people that continue to invite you and to make space for you to show up at events that they are hosting and doing things that they are doing and um, walking with them. And it's time out now for gardening, but maybe putting away all of your summer things for the season. There is Thanksgiving available in those times. And so I'm thankful for that as the sun kind of comes in and I'm reminded I have to get out there and get this lawn furniture in. Um, I am coming to a close in terms of the things that I prepared for you. Um, uh, and I want to land on just two words. And the first one is in be intentional. I want to encourage you all to be intentional in your Thanksgiving. And so um, about 10 years ago, gratitude jumped on the uh, scene as something that people wanted to practice all the time. And you had calendars that talked about gratitude and, and you had conversations and you had keynotes and you had a lot of things talking about gratitude. And I want to and remind you that basically we can decide to be in a posture of Thanksgiving that we can choose to be in a posture of thanksgiving. We can be intentional to activate our thanksgiving. Um, and, and one of the ways of doing that is to just make sure that we're reflecting on um, the things that we, this gratitude, just, just being um, a person that shows gratitude. I am thankful for you. I have gratitude for you today. Um, my life is inexorably different because you showed up today. And so thank you for sharing your time with me. And I hope you have just a fantastic day today. And I hope that this week you are reminded of the people that are uh, giving life to you and that you say thank you. And so thank you so much for sharing your time with me, you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. I just want to, her words again, if, if uh, you know, you get this little taste of Renita, but it's a big taste of her energy field when she says things such as, because I always write down things that she says, is when people spill into your life and they change you, these acquaintances are people who kind of spill into your life and they change you. Think about that and send gratitude. Um, Renita was the one that I reached out to when I was having a really difficult weekend. And she goes, oh my, Miss Hope, we have to have a plan, don't we, for you? And so, and what she has also taught me, and she said that a little bit today as well, is that challenges can be a blessing because they're, she would always say to me, well, another opportunity for character character development so she turns she turns it around to something good and wonderful and we're all going through a lot of character building right now and so um I, I just want you to just allow the words of thanksgiving and when she said the word intentionality to activate your gratitude right now to really activate that however you see that that you need to do that, to activate that and to act on that, to, to, to say thank you to people, to say thank you. Again, to our kids, uh, when my grandchildren turn 16, they receive a golden letter from me. Mm -hmm. When my grandchildren turn 18, they receive another golden letter from me of letting them know how much they've um, driven the Holy Spirit back into my body again and given me breath. And so we want you, sweet Renita and I and Melissa and Amy doing this, we all want you to activate, get that activation going right now and feel the Holy Spirit, feel that cosmic intelligence and allow it to be your everyday expression somehow, some way, somewhere. Um, just the expression that I get to breathe today, that I got up today, that I got up. So 
I thank you, Renita, so much for joining us today. Um, it's such a wonderful, wonderful thing to have you in my life and to share share you in my life. So I thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you all. Sweet. Sweet Amy is going to give us a reflection song. I start over. <laughs> I'm 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 in the energy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Just allow that vibration to come into you. Just allow that vibration to come into you. Now we get to have sweet Gina on the softest, wonderful, purest soul that I know. She is going to do Reiki communion for us. That's Gina. Hello, everybody. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Holt, Melissa, and Renita. Thank you all for being here now. Um, let's all just bring our hands together in front of us and just rub them together so we can begin to activate our Reiki energy in our hand centers, our universal guided energy. And then we can just bring our hands in front of our hearts, begin to focus in on our breathing. Our breath is what creates the Reiki energy at our heart center. You can close your eyes or soften your gaze. And just bring your awareness to the sensations that you're feeling. And with each breath, allow your heart to open and expand to receive the energy.
and to all beyond. Sending love out to everyone. And as a collective, we can take a nice cleansing breath in and breath out, coming back into our bodies. Thank you. Thank you, Gina. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And so I'm just going to do a little benediction on you and then sweet Amy will uh, bring us out of our circle today. Uh, once again, I want to thank all of you. It's great to have Jan and Angela and another Susan, Julie, um, Julie Kroon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Kathy, Karen, everybody here, uh, Miranda, uh, Julie Wiley, all of you beautiful beings. Um, many of you started out in my basement and you're still here. <laughs> you're still here as a collective working for the glory of God and the wisdom of what's gonna happen upon the planet. So we are moving towards a happy and spiritual enlightened future that is imminent. We are moving towards a happy and spiritual enlightened future. Keep coming back to the Zoom Circle churches as we indeed spread this love and light and gratitude into the universe. Gratitude and appreciation is the cosmic vibration, which is a tide. So every time we send out gratitude, it is like a tide that goes out, comes up and over and brings us more to be grateful for more to be thankful. Let's take this activation of which we have received during this time in which sweet, sweet Renita talked about. Let's take that activation and let's move that into the ocean of love. Let go of drama and spread your wings and fly. Let us all fly into the golden future. Be kind, be loving, be forgiving. See everyone as your brother and sister in the Christ eyes. And most of all, as we walk into the rest of this month and as we walk into Thanksgiving, let us all be thankful. We have so much, so much to be thankful for. Don't let a day go by without saying thank you to someone somewhere at some time. Just be in gratitude. And so it is. Amen. Okay, Miss Amy. So this is an Irish. Um, it's actually a love song, but I thought it was appropriate for this time of year and especially this kind of a beautiful day. Um, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce the Gaelic title because it's like all consonants. So <laughs> there's like two vowels, but um, 
the the words of the song the first lines are on the stubble fields of autumn my darling i spied you nice mm. were your feet in boots and lovely was your walk your cheeks were like the roses your hair all unbound i like to think that i look like that when i'm out walking <laughs> So I send you off with this. It's a beautiful day to go on a journey outside. Thank you. Thank you, my dear. Thank you, everybody. Am I off? Yeah, come on. Everybody have a great, 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 beautiful day and happy Thanksgiving to you all. And I cherish you and I'm thankful for you, my community, my golden community. I'm thankful, I'm thankful. I thank you so much. I know your time is valuable. So I will close off. Thank you, Renita, once again, for being a grand and great friend to me, being a grand and great friend. Thank you so much. Thank you, Melissa, for helping. Thank you, my sweet spirit child, Amy, for playing the harp. Have a good day, my friends. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, sweetheart. Thank you much. Thank you. So grateful. <laughs>